<clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shahbaz, for your kind introductions. And special thanks to Dr. Nimai Chand Shah, the University Librarian, Vishwa Bharti uh, Shanti Niketan University, for initiating this wonderful uh, six days uh, workshop on unlocking knowledge and then open access solutions. So this is really high time for us to understand and need to revamp the libraries and library system. Though uh, Dr. Shahabad spoke about the kind of learning we have from different parts of the globe. And based on my these practices, uh, because if you look at the present era, the digital society, each and everyone has an access of their information. This is not a time for the librarian to curate and collect the, and organize the, you know, the lit, uh, literature or the different kind of, but this is high time. We are not only collecting, providing the access to knowledge, but this is high time to ensure optimal utilization of the resources available in the libraries. We had Benedict University talking about written on investment, ROI. So whatever we have curated, collected from different sources, whatever we have procured, subscribed, we have to justify, we need to justify because libraries are occupying very important space of the university, use space, a lot of infrastructures. So on the other side, there's a lot of expectations. I'm not uh, you know, talking about the public libraries, public universities, but in private universities, there's always a challenge to get in a uh, proper infrastructures, budget, space. So if you look at the present scenario, or if you look at in the last three years or four years that when talking about COVID, last two to three years during the COVID, everything was in online, the school education, higher education, or any kind of research was taking place. And look at that, there was a complete shutdown. And then suddenly we, all people have to come up with the solutions and we provided all the resources online through remote access. So when we can manage everything during the COVID, when we can provide the libraries two to three years during COVID, why not today? Why don't we require, why don't we require a kind of space, kind of infrastructures or the resources? So libraries and librarian role is not limiting, collecting, curating, organizing, and providing the access to the knowledge and resources, but beyond that. I'm a Commonwealth fellow, I got an opportunity to visit London during uh, 2012 and I was hosted at Middlesex University and during three months of my fellowship at London, I got an opportunity to visit all top-notch universities of the United Kingdom. Again, I was you know, invited for the fellowship in 2017. Again, we have gone through different set of, of workshops and different set of skills. So I got a lot of lesson from there, Western universities. If you look at it, there was the first time I saw, saw there is so many librarians in the you know, different uh, universities. And librarian means director. Then I asked why it is in so many librarians. There are physics librarians, there is uh, you know, electronic and communication librarian, computer science librarian. So then I told, I was told that time that there is an every school has an a one license library. Why is it required over there? Because when you're talking about license librarian, that means the person who uh, dealing with a particular subject has a master degree on the particular subject along with the library science. Because I'm a commerce graduate, hardly I'm able to understand you know the core biology or that you know core physics. So in case there is a complex query from the user side, so uh, we need to look at, we cannot uh, uh, you know, answer promptly. We have to go explore here and there and then we can uh, you know able to provide. But in case we are having a provision like in Western universities, so a person who did the master in particular subject can easily understand what exactly is required. 
and not only appointing the subject librarian over there, but there was in a there was in a library instructions program. All subject librarian supposed to take classes. The library uh, librarian used to go to the classrooms. When they are going to the classroom, they are able to educate the students, scholar, and faculty better about the available resources, how to make the optimal utilization of resources, ensure mapping the library resources along with uh, the curriculum as well as the faculty profile. So, based on their different uh, you know practices, again to uh, 2018, I got an opportunity to visit. Uh, Harvard University. I, I was there for one week. Uh, there was a program on uh, LI Leadership Institute for Academic Librarians. There was an around 200 library directors from US and across, USA and uh, Europe. My idea was not to go and attend that particular uh, one week program, but want to look at why that universities like Harvard or MIT always they are listed on the top of the you know global ranking. So I was just to understand the trying what kind of library system they have designed, what kind of services they are offering, what kind of tool technology they are you know using to facilitate their users. So based on all my different experiences last about 20 years, 25 years. So we started at Bennett University, the research support services, and I'm going to discuss how we initiated the research support services at my university and how these services are impactful and why you as a librarian should initiate this kind of services in the respective institutions. I will be discussing about this uh, why uh, should we initiate research support services in academic libraries? Why should we plan research support services? How should we plan and what kind of services should be included in the research support services? Librarian and research instructions program and promote library, uh, promote research through event and activities. You can interrupt me in case there is any, 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 any queries or questions. Uh, I'll happy to answer. So why should we uh, initiate uh, research support services? First and foremost is ranking, accreditation, and benchmarking of institutions. How? Look at here. This is an old screenshot I took in from the Hara Times Higher Education Ranking Framework. And I found the University of Oxford, Cambridge, Stanford, MIT, the few institutions are always, always, always on that you know, top score. But more important is that if you look at in this red one, every ranking accreditations, they give a lot of weightage to the research, apart from the teaching or other infrastructure or whatever. So research and innovations got highest weightage, whether you are going for NAC accreditation, whether you are going for NBA, whether you are going for a NIRF, QS ranking, Times ranking, whatever ranking you do. You can look at the carefully how much weight is given to research and innovations. So this is look at again NIRF. Again, they have given a highest weight is here, NIRF. This is the neck. Uh, again, weight is look at that 250 out of two 1000. Look at here. Research innovation and extension. So when everything is you know having this kind of uh, priorities of the institutions again connecting you the pandemic so libraries a librarian need to involve with the community not only providing access to knowledge but contributing to knowledge and we a libraries librarians should how to have that kind of such a kind of activities in the libraries. So the institution will have an independency of the libraries and librarian. And whenever the institution going for any kind of accreditation ranking, definitely they have to go to the library. The way we are providing a research data to 
Bennett University at the time of the accreditation ranking. Second, why should we support research? Because a university's primary motive is to ex academic and excellence in research. And whenever the university is going for any kind of research grant, they need different kind of research metric of the institutions. So this is a high time again library and librarian to provide. When we are going to any kind of international uh, collaborations, why the top institution globally should have a MOU with that Indian institutions until unless they are doing something different. They are doing something extraordinary in terms of research, academics. So when any institution, we are going for any, any kind of uh, international collaborations, they look at the institution, research metrics, total document indexing scopus and web of science or other databases, citations, H index and average citation of faculty member. So many. Things. Again, next is the academic and social visibility. Once we are doing something well, you look at the social media, many of good institutions in this country, every day they're posting something new, uh, excellent news. What they've achieved, patent or whatever. So, promotion. Uh, uh, benefit, uh, financial benefit or something. The, in case we are involved with the faculty members, supporting research, writing grants, providing different set of data, certainly they will have a kind of more close working with the libraries. And next is that benchmarking of institutions. I do a lot of benchmarking. Every year I look at that, how we are doing at the Vanity University. So these are the reasons we should involve as a librarian or library with the research fraternity of the institutions. And finally, attract admission and other opportunities, certainly, in case we are doing something well. And having a more visibility in the society, certainly we can attract more admissions and other benefit of the society. Now question is that how should we plan the research, research support services? When we started research support services at the Venet University, I explored so many universities, library portals, institutions which are ranked in the times of uh, times higher education ranking or QS ranking. And based on their all best practices of different situations, I understand what and why and how we should initiate research support services. This is not enough to look at their best practices. Important is that we should burn the finger. We should how to you know, create and generate and that kind of set of skills among the library team members. When I'm going to talk about the research skills, I should know about the research process. I should know about the research metrics. I should know about the how to extract the scopus of web science data, how we can have any uh, correlations. So many things is there. So after identifying all these services, we equip ourselves first. I've, I have gone through different research support services, the research papers, before initiating research support at the Bennett, and understand how and you know what kind of services they are offering, how what are the impact of the research on, uh, on academic and research opportunity. When we are going to uh, initiate research support services, there is a standard research process. We should know about the research process. And broadly, it is a, you know, categorized when we are going to st starting research with identifying a problem and then looking at the literature and designing hypothesis. After hypothesis, we are designing research design and collecting data, analyzing, concluding, and based on the conclusion, we are going, going to publish thesis of the research papers. And then finally, whatever we are able to publish, we curate and preserve that research output in, in that, uh, 
institutional repository. So we design 4P. 4P, first is plan. When we are going to start research, this is the first three things is, you know, related to planning, identification of the problem, literature, what kind of literature should I, how, how long should I, and uh, type of the literature should I uh, review, and how to design an hypothesis, and then next, next P is that perform. After planning, how we have to perform the research. That is kind of research design, collection, and do this is three stages, performance. And then finally, after the performing, we are getting published, means we are writing the research and publishing here. And this is the 4P, planning, perform, publish, and preserve. Okay. So after that, we design our own uh, con uh, conceptual framework related to research design. Yeah. So our stakeholders who, who are the stakeholder? Our master student, PhD scholar, faculty and students, UG students. Okay. And what are, I was talking about 4P, when talking about 4P, then when scholars going for this planning stage, what we are, how we are helping them? How we are helping them? We are, we are conducting the classes in the you know, classroom and helping them to collect and curate the different set of literature. And then we are taking lecture on literature, search, studies and technique so that they can identify the good quality literature. And telling them why they should use the library resources than Google or other search engines. When before you know starting and searching the literature, they should have to have a proper strategy in their mind. They should have to have a set of questions in their mind and then use advanced or simple search strategy. And library team is involved in fetching the data from Scopus and Web of Science and analyzing using bibliometric technique and providing them top 200 research paper based on the citation so that they can not misguided and they can look, not look at, though not required, looking here and there. They can start their work directly. When talking about performance of the research, we are helping them to download the you know, top papers. We are helping to create their personal library using Mendeley and then how to use Mendeley and you managing the citation a different set of style of a different type of citation automatically. We are telling them to create their own account on academic social network like Academy on ResearchGate so that they can follow the latest research taking place globally and providing different kind of uh, author workshops and other trainings. While they're on stage, on publishing stage, then we are selecting how to select the right journal for the research publications. We are telling them different set of online tools are available for general finder, general finder. The many publishers they started. Scholars just have to paste the title and abstract and just click that general finder will let you know which journal is close to your research so that acceptance possibility will be high. Preparation of manuscript while they are going to you know, prepare manuscript, we are helping them, telling them to use uh, software like eternity. Look at that, you know, similarity, how to paraphrase and all, you know, how to avoid all the kind of uh, things. And telling them all that UGC and other norms. Apart from that, we are also talking about copyright and creative common license. And then once they are published, when they publish the research, we have designed library publication repository, LRC DRS. You can search from your own that just put it in Google, LRC DRS, you can see the research. So this is the whole conceptual uh, framework we designed for the research support services. And again, Apart from this library research support services, this is the uh, research skills program I introduced 
Adventist University in 2017. Whenever the University Grant Commission, UGC, initiated research ethics program in 2018. And this is a mandatory program, one candidate program. Every research scholar at the Bennett University, they have to qualify, they have to success in this program. They need to attend all these classes. They need to have uh, all assignment given by me. They have to attend in Viva and they have to make a presentation. I'm ensuring, if you look at this four or five unit, starting with literature search techniques and strategy, literature review and reference management, research ethics and academic integrity, research publication cycle, research measurement and productivity and visibility. And one more unit I added, that is a research data management. So if you look at all around this program, this course, one student is, you know, going through this kind of exercise, I'm sure they will have a better understanding, they will have better skills of the research, and they can perform better comparatively and, you know, general research scholars. So this is library portal at the Vanity University. Look at the kind of services we are offering to the scholars. This is a like kind of repository what we have established and all the Bennett, most of Bennett publications are available here up to the abstract level. In case someone want to download, they need to connect the administrator of the repository just to widen a, you know, copyright issues and all. Again, we have again initiated in this program provided by, supported by Infibinet just to attract the faculty and their work so they can they understand the research. Nowadays we're talking about this workshop is talking about unlocking knowledge, open access solutions. So we used so many open source applications, starting with library automations, Koha, repository using DSpace, and the subject guide we're talking about. We are using lip plus, subject plus. So again, this is an open source. What we have done here, we have mapped the faculty profile with the library resources. All the resources in the library are mapped with the curriculum. So this is the subject guide, what we, we are working on it. Just click on the faculty profile and look at one faculty as a major concern is the two things. One is the teaching. That means what, kind, what subject he or she is teaching. And another is the research. So faculty members are busy in the classrooms since morning to evening, hardly have a time to explore the library resources. And this kind of initiatives will help them and they can provide an access to the knowledge resources on single click. They're really not required to search the data here and there. As I told you, I'm teaching the research data management to the PhD scholar and Encouraging them to use research data repositories like Fixair and create their account, upload their data, and massive data is available, research, raw research data is available on this repository so that other scholars can use the same data, no need to reinvent the wheel again and again. We are going to publish newsletters just to create an awareness among university fraternity about the library sources and research data. We are compiling research compendium annually. Whatever research, publication, faculty published, scholar published, student published, we are compiling whole data along with the research matrix. So that at the time of the inspection or accreditations, or any important visit. This is a handy document we can provide to them. And even though we can motivate faculty member, the kind of research published across institutions. We are conducting a lot of activities at the Vanity University International Conference, at least 2018, and so many other events, like I was talking about LibQuest, one week library festival. 
and there was a lot of fun games in the, within the library. Idea is just to bring the student to the within the library and tell them kind of a location of the resources, what the resources are available, so that they can they can aware about the availability of the resources, they can utilize the resources. So this kind of activity is really required in the universities. I'm again conducting a lot of workshops, research writing pro workshops, author workshops to create an awareness and to net let uh, faculty scholars know about the expectation of the editorial board so that they can prepare their research manuscript accordingly. This is a library literature program, we, literature festival we organized last year and education ministers and Kiran Vedi, Madam Kiran Vedi was there along with the different corporate authors. There's a lot of two days program full of learning and in that way we can promote libraries, library resources, library services and can create a kind of sensitivity within the campus community. Yes, library is something important. They are always taking kind of extraordinary initiatives, involving community, connecting community is very important. So more than 20 universities, my own universities, the faculty member, student, scholar who wrote up some book, we invited them to, uh, we fel felicitated them uh, during the inaugural function, just to motivate them to write more and more books. So this is the, all the old data, uh, now we have a better uh, situation in, the, in terms of the research. So, library in Advanced universities involved with the teaching, the research scholar. So they are not only coming to the library, but libraries, a librarian going to the classroom. Therefore, we are conducting a lot of uh, value added research community programs. So long-term goal is that to, uh, to measure the impact of the services provided to help and enhance the research of the stakeholders. Idea, overall idea was of this, you know, services is to reduce the time span of the PhD program. Like one PhD scholar is completing research in three years. I want to save minimum six months of the scholar by providing all set of services to them so that they can directly work on the actual research not wasting their time to collect and curate and finding this and that kind of information from here and there. So we need to design an efficient framework for the research support. Maybe the research support services I initiated is not necessary to useful for at your institution. Your environment can be different, but look at that your environment. Look at the expectation of your and your end users and introduce the research skills course mandatory for researcher, researcher and if possible at the graduate level. And liberal implementation policy in higher education, top to bottom. This is not, uh, you know, bottom to top approach. This is uh, top to bottom. And uh, took an, I took a confidence with the vice chancellor and proposed this course at the academic council and it is approved by academic council and then I started teaching. So thank you very much. Now I'm open for the uh, discussion. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your kind and uh, <clears throat> very informative lecture. So now the floor is open for the question. So may I request uh, the participants to raise uh, uh, questions in the chat box if you have, or you may raise your hand also. There are two things. Either people do not understand what we did, or everyone is completely understand what I deliver. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, sir. So I so think I'm there open is no... for any 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 questions and discussion. 
I can help the people to design the research support services in case anyone is interested. Right. Okay. So we see all the best. So I so think there is no fruitful workshop. So thank you, sir. For uh, in spite of your bad health, uh, your illness, you have joined and uh, you have enlightened us on your theme area. So thanks, sir. Thank you for once again. And Dr. Kadaria, sir, I like to seek your kind assistance and cooperation for future endeavor of my journey at Vishwarati for catering live services. And <laughs> to me, you are a person who is having open access approach. I do not think you like a license oriented person. I found you always an open access person. So like earlier occasions, whenever I call you, please be with us on your expert's opinion so that we will reach our integrity of professional activities and offer library services, even in the AI era, even in the ML era, or even in the technological era. You always say that whatever may be the changing phenomena come in the society, this library profession and librarian was there, is here, and will be there in future, provided if we try to make ourselves the entity of needful for the current academic course on the changing phenomenon. So by compliance, your uh, suggestion, by compliance, your pedagogy, we are here uh, working. So sir, we need to have your kind suggestion, kind uh, expertise in future endeavor. Thank you very much, Kataria, sir. Thank you, thank, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much. All the best, all the participants.